Hello, welcome to this video. Today we're looking at Microsoft Forms and these are going to be my top tips for creating a self-marking quiz. So to access Microsoft Forms, we click on the nine boxes and choose Forms. Those boxes can either appear in the top right or top left corner. We've then got access to all of the forms or quizzes we've created historically. We can look at forms that have been shared with us and group forms. So I'm going to click New Quiz because that's the setting I need if I want to create something that provides students with feedback. So I can put in the title I could enter a description, I could also add an image. So the next thing I'm going to add is a text-based question because that type of question can have a correct answer. So we can add in our question We could also add an image if we chose to. And then we can add our correct answer at the bottom. If we had multiple answers, we could click add further answers. If we wanted it to be a long text-based question, we could click long answer. I tend to find that if you add long answers and it's lots of text, it doesn't always get it. If the words aren't in exactly the same order as you put them, it doesn't net recognize it as correct. So I tend to stick for the short answers for this type of question. You need to tick it as required. And then we're ready to add our next question. So a standard text-based question works really well for self-marking. We'll add a next question. This next type of question we're gonna add is a ranking question. This also works well for self-marking. So we'll add the question in. These are just, as it says at the top, a set of random questions for the purposes of this demo. So with this, with the ranking question, you put the answers in, in the order, you the, in the correct order. So, but you can move them around. So we'll just, that's it. So we've got, enter those in. and then you can move them around so you get the order that you want. So this is the correct order as it says. Students then, if they respond in a different order, it'll be marked incorrectly. So this is a great way of, if you want students to recall a set of processes, you can write the processes and they have to put them in the order that they would do them. For example, if they were having to go through how to make a cake and the various steps involved in that and they'd have to sequence them. So as a sequencing activity, that's really useful. And as I say, the order they appear here will be the order that's determined as correct. Again, make it a, a required question. You can add points if you wish, and then we're ready to add our next question. So then the next type of question to use if you want it to be self-marking is the choice question. So we'll just paste in our text for that question. Now, obviously, this, this type of question doesn't really fit with multiple choice, but for the purposes of this demo, it will do. So we're just going to add in our answers. And you see, as soon as you start to add one answer, it suggests AI picks it up and goes, oh, would these also be appropriate answers? And you can add those. And then you can determine which is the correct answer by putting a tick and you can add some feedback. So you can add a message there to display. Again, making it a required question. There's more than one correct question, then you can, um, correct answer, you can add multiple answers. So there we have the types of questions that work for a self-marking assessment. We'll add some other question formats just so you can see what else there is. So a like just in case you're not sure what one of those is, it's a way of having multiple responses to the same question. So let's copy and paste the question in there.
you can start to add your options and if you spell it correctly which I haven't done I'll just make sure we've got that spelled correctly always helps and you can start to add your responses in and if you decide you don't want that many responses you can delete it so that's a Likert style which is quite useful if you want to get responses or ratings to a number of different types of things but there isn't an option for this to be marked so it can't be used as part of a self-assessment and then the final question I was going to show is the net promoter which again is quite useful for ranking and you can I mean it's got a, a suggestion there but you can put in how useful did you find did you find this session and you can and you've got that there so there are the other types of questions that you can add as I said, you can add images to lots of lots of the questions allow you to add an image and that can be quite useful. So for example, if we're looking at the multiple choice question, if we click add image and we've got a choice to insert either an image or a video, if we choose image, we can either access one from Bing, OneDrive, or we can upload an image. So I've got an image here. So this is an image I've created in PowerPoint and I've added the image of the camera and then the labels. So if I click open image. It'll take a moment just to upload that image for me. And I can choose to make the image small or, or large. So it's a large image. So what I could do is I could change the question type, type and say label part A. And it could be multiple choice, which is label relates to the part A or it could just be a text-based question asking them to label part A and I could repeat that process label part B label part C and so on and so forth so that's quite a useful feature so using PowerPoint to create a label the object activity then inserting it into your quiz making it a large image and then just asking them to label relating to the letter on the label so we've now created our our quiz we've got our questions there some things we, we need to consider. So I like to, at this point, always go to preview and have a look at what my question looks like, especially on a mobile phone, because lots of cases students are asking mobile phones. And at the moment, there's lots of scrolling, which I'm not so keen on. So what we can do is after each couple of questions, we can go to add new and we can choose to add a section. And this just breaks up the number of questions that appear because we've got an image on that one. We'll add a section underneath that. I'm happy with that. So now if I go to preview and choose mobile phone, they're only, they've only got a couple of questions, not much in the way of scrolling. And see they're not having to scroll as much as they would do so it's much easier to do but there's something we can do to improve that further so if we click on the three dots and go to settings what we can do is we can bring up a progress bar and from a motivation point of view you know what it's like you've been asked to complete a form or a survey and you just don't know when it's going to end and it seems like it's going on forever well this if we go back to preview shows you how many sections you've got left to complete so it's just useful to help motivation as they go through and work filling in the answers so we've now we've added our question types we've added sections to make it easy to navigate we've also added a progress bar so we're almost at the position where we're ready to share it but there's one other thing that we can do within settings we go to settings we can choose when it's going to be available so we click 
for under the options for responses, if we choose start date, we can set exactly the time and date you want it to be available. This is really useful because you could add a link to your VLE, whether that be Canvas, Blackboard, or Microsoft Teams, and the link only the form only becomes receptive to responses at a particular time. So this is quite useful if you're setting something for homework as part of an asynchronous activity. Other things you can do within the settings is you can send an email to recipient. You can also get a notification for all of the responses. You can also customize the message that is sent to them. So you go, thank you for submitting your homework or whatever you want to say to them. So that's quite a useful thing to think about doing. When you've, if you decide not to use the start date and end date, you can just disable responses when you, when you don't want students to fill in the form anymore. And whilst we're on the three dots, the other thing to show you is there is the option to print a form and it will give you a preview and you could print it out. Maybe if a student doesn't have access to a, a device at home, you could send them that and use it in that way. So we're now ready to share the form. So we go to share and we've got two choices. Only people in the organization can respond. This will require the student to log in with their college or school account. And that's great because it automatically captures their name and their details. However, sometimes, depending on how you're using it, if you're getting students to access it via their mobile phone, that will delay them because they'll have to log on. So the other way you can do it is anyone with a link can respond. If you do this, it's worth adding a text question which has their name so you know who's said what. So either of those, but as I say, if you use the anyone with a link can respond, then it's definitely worth making sure that you put a name text question for them to add so you know who's made the response. Other ways you can share it is you've got, you can grab an embed code, you can email it, and you can also grab a QR code. This is really useful if you want to share it via a presentation in class and your students respond by scanning the QR code in your presentation and picking up the, qu the quiz on their mobile phone. So that's how you can share it. If you want to, to share, to collaborate it with a, a, a fellow colleague, then you can do that as well. Or you can also share it as a template so others can duplicate it. So let's, let's share it via a link. Anyone with a link can respond. So let's just copy that link. We go to our VLE or Google Classroom, whatever else, Microsoft Teams, whatever the platform is we're using, we could insert that link in and then this is what the students will see. Uh, again, as I say, with the ranking one, they have to put it in the order. We're getting our progress bar. And then submitting it. So having submitted the answers to view the results so as a student to view the results to see how many i've got correct i click view results and i can see that my first question was correct my second question was also correct my third question was wrong and i could have a comment there to say why it was wrong and then the others are just me responding so that's what the student sees so if i go back to look at that form now, I can go to responses and I can start to see some information. I can see graphs, pie charts, showing how people have responded, which is really useful. And this is really useful because it's anonymized. So this is quite useful if you want to do this as a connect activity at the start of the class, you can bring this up and show it in that way. Or if I wish to, I can review the answers and I can look at each student's, it's gonna take a moment to come up, each student's response and see what each student said. Or I can go to questions and look at all of the answers there. So I can go through each question and look at how they were gathered. So there we have it. Now the other option you can do is you can obviously download that as an Excel spreadsheet. So there you have it, a quick guide, my top tips for creating a self-marking assessment in Microsoft Forms. I hope you found the video useful. 
please give it a like, remember to subscribe to the channel and join me again soon for more EdTech videos. Thanks for watching.